Good evening and welcome to our nightly bulletin at 9 o'clock where for 10 minutes we tell you what's going on in the country void of any noise or opinion or any sort of stance. It's just an old school, almost Durdashan way of telling you what happened today. Let's take a look at the news right now. Well, in our first story, the Election Commission has announced the schedule of the upcoming ele uh, Assembly elections in Assam, Kerala, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. West Bengal's election in its 294 seats will be held in eight phases, whereas Tamil Nadu with 234 seats will take place in a single phase. Assam will see three phases of voting starting the 27th of March in its 126 seats. The elections in Kerala and Puducherry will also be held in a single phase on the 6th of April along with Tamil Nadu. Counting of votes in all the four states and the Union Territory will be done on the same day on the 2nd of May this year. The All India Transporters Welfare Association was on strike today to protest rising fuel prices, GST and the e-way bill. They claim amendments to the law of GST and e-way are complicated, regressive and draconian. More than 8 crore traders from 40,000 businesses and organizations across the country were on strike and kept their establishment shut today. Lacks of trucks stayed off the roads as well between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m., although essential services like medicines, dairy and vegetables were available. Demands were to include or to review the GST system for their businesses, simplification of the tax slabs, reduction of diesel and petrol prices and scrapping of the e-way bill laws. Now, the eBay bill is a permit that truckers need to get to carry moving goods from one place to another. The Bund actually saw maximum support in Punjab and Haryana, and several opposition parties and trade unions also extended their support. Some impact was seen in Odisha, Maharashtra and Bihar. Dalit labor activist Nodeep Kaur has been granted bail by the Punjab and Haryana High Court. The matter on the allegations of her illegal detention will continue to be heard by the court. Now, Nodeep Kaur char is charged in three cases, including attempt to murder and extortion, and she's already been granted bail in the other two cases. In her petition, Kaur, who is a member of the Mazdoor Adhikar Sangatan, claimed that she was targeted and falsely implicated in this case because she was successful in generating massive support for the ongoing farmer movement against the center's three farm laws. She claimed she was physically assaulted by the police and in judicial custody after she was arrested by the Sonipat police in January. She also said her medical examination was not conducted in violation of Section 54 of the Criminal Procedure Code. The Haryana police have denied all allegations. In an election rally, Gujarat Chief Minister Vijay Rupani said that his government will bring a strict law against what he called Love Jihad to stop the kidnapping and conversion of Hindu girls. He said that women are being lured and converted and that this new law is aimed to stop such activities. And on to business news now. It was a grim day at the stock market today. The Indian stock market crashed, uh, posting its worst single day fall in 10 months as investors sold stock across the board. The Sensex ended the day 3.8% lower losing 1,939 points. Now, this is what happened, and this is the reason why that happened. U.S. bond deals moved higher today, with confidence in the country's economy improving. And this prompted fear that governments across the world would begin tapering off the massive amounts of cash that they had pumped into their economies in order to keep their economies afloat over the last one year. Um, this triggered a sell-off across stock markets across the world, including ours. Uh, some analysts have called it a, because it's a fear of tapering off of cash, they called it a taper tantrum, which I thought I should tell you because I thought it was amusing. What was not amusing, though, was the 5.3 lakh crore rupees that investors in India lost today. Ola has begun construction on the world's largest electric two-wheeler mega factory on its 500-acre site in Tamil Nadu. The company announced a 2,400 crore rupee MOU with the Tamil Nadu government in December last year and completed its land acquisition in January this year. Now, the company in its statement said, and I quote, we are racing ahead to operationalize this factory in the next few months 
the first phase of production will begin in months, end quote. Moving on now to some international news. Australia has passed a law requiring Google and Facebook to pay publishers for news content. Last week, Facebook had in fact blocked all news content from its platform in Australia and in fact blocked all Australian news content from being seen on its platform anywhere in the world. It reversed that decision following negotiations with the government. This matters really because this legislation A will cost both of the companies, Facebook and Google, a fair sum of money, but it also sets the stage for potential similar action in other countries across the world. In China, President Xi Jinping has announced that China has achieved a miracle by eradicating extreme poverty. He declared that nearly 100 million rural people in China were out of poverty, with 832 poverty-stricken counties and 128,000 villages taken off the poverty list. But we must remember that China's definition of extreme poverty in the form of income is $1.69 per day, which is below the World Bank's global threshold of $1.9 a day, and this is according to Reuters. According to the Johns Hopkins University data, the United States has reported the highest number of coronavirus deaths globally at 5 lakh or 500,000 so far, followed by Brazil with 2 lakh 49,000 and Mexico with 1 lakh 83,000. In India, we've reported 11 million cases, but 1.57 lakh deaths. In the last 24 hours, though, India reported 16,577 new COVID cases and 120 deaths. Let's take a look at the sporting world at this point. Indian off spinner Ravichandran Ashwin today became the second fastest bowler to take 400 wickets in Test cricket, achieving the feat during England's second innings in the Test in Ahmedabad. The 34-year-old dismissed Jofra Archer to reach 400 wickets in his 77th test match. Former Sri Lankan off-spinner Muttaya Murli Taran is the fastest bowler to have reached that milestone in 72 matches. Also, Yusuf Patan has announced his retirement from all forms of cricket. Yusuf Patan played 57 ODIs and 22 T20s for India between 2007 and 2012. He was part of both the 2007 T20 World Cup winning team and the 2011 ODI World Cup winning team. Among the Indian players, he has the second highest T20 strike rate at a minimum of 200 runs. And now for that bit of positive news that you said you wanted to end your day with. All Delhi government vehicles are now going to switch to electric vehicles in the next six months. Now this is an attempt to curb pollution and promote sustainability. So all petrol, diesel and CNG vehicles of the Delhi government will be replaced with electric vehicles in the next six months. For the first time, any department or autonomous body of the Delhi government can hire an electric vehicle with permission from the finance department and they don't need permission later to extend those contracts. That brings us to the end of the news tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Do leave us your feedback. Uh, it's really nice to know what you're thinking. Leave us a thumbs up if you find this useful. We'll be back again every day to give you the news. Thanks for watching. Good night.